Maya Angelou became a poet and writer after a series of occupations as a young adult, including fry cook, prostitute, nightclub dancer and performer, cast member for the opera Porgy and Bess, coordinator for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and journalist in Egypt and Ghana during the days of decolonization. She was an actor, writer, director, and producer of plays, movies, and public television programs. Since 1982, she taught at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where she held the first lifetime Reynolds Professorship of American Studies. She was active in the civil rights movement and worked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Since the 1990s, she made around 80 appearances a year on the lecture circuit, something she continued into her 80s. With the publication of I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, Angelou publicly discussed aspects of her personal life. She was respected as a spokesperson of black people and for women, and her works have been considered a defense of black culture. Attempts have been made to ban her books from some U.S. libraries, but her works are widely used in schools and universities worldwide. Angelou's major works have been labeled as autobiographical fiction, but many critics have characterized them as autobiographical. She made a deliberate attempt to challenge the common structure of the autobiography by critiquing, changing, and expanding the genre. Her books center on themes such as racism, identity, family, and travel. President Clinton, all presidents, all excellencies, all friends, I wrote this piece for every human being on earth. We, this people, on a small and lonely planet, traveling through casual space, past aloof stars, across the way of indifferent suns, to a destination where all signs tell us it is possible and imperative that we discover a brave and startling truth. And when we come to it, to the day of peacemaking, when we release our fingers from fists of hostility and allow the pure air to cool our palms, when we come to it, when the curtain falls on the minstrel show of hate and faces sooted with scorn are scrubbed clean, when battlefields and coliseum no longer rake our unique and particular sons and daughters up with the bruised and bloody grass to lie in identical plots in foreign lands. When the rapacious storming of the churches, the screaming racket in the temples have ceased. When the pennants are waving gaily, when the banners of the world tremble stoutly in the good clean breeze. When we come to it, when we let the rifles fall from our shoulders and children dress their dolls in flags of truce, when landmines of death have been removed and the aged may walk into evenings of peace, when the religious ritual is not perfumed by the incense of burning flesh and childhood dreams are not kicked awake by nightmares of abuse. When we come to it, then we will confess that not the pyramids with their stones set in mysterious perfection, not the garden of Babylon hanging as eternal beauty in our collective memory, not the Grand Canyon kindled into delicious color by Western sunset, nor the Danube flowing its blue soul into Europe, not the sacred peak of Mount Fuji stretching to the rising sun, neither Father Amazon nor Mother Mississippi, who without favor nurture all creatures in the depths and on the shores. These are not the only wonders of the world. When we come to it, we, this people, on this minuscule and kithless globe, who reach daily for the bomb, the blade, the dagger, yet who petition in the dark for tokens of peace. We, this people, on this moat of matter, 
in whose mouths abide cankerous words which challenge our existence. Yet out of those same mouths can come songs of such exquisite sweetness that the heart falters in its labor and the body is quieted into all. We, this people, on this small and drifting planet whose hands can strike with such abandon that in a twinkling life is sapped from the living. Yet those same hands can touch with such healing, irresistible tenderness that the haughty neck is happy to bow and the proud back is glad to bend. Out of such chaos, of such contradiction, we learn that we are neither devils nor divines. When we come to it, we, this people, on this wayward floating body, created on this earth, of this earth, have the power to fashion for this earth a climate where every man and every woman can live freely without sanctimonious piety and without crippling fear. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We are the miraculous, the true wonder of this world. That is when, and only when, we come to it.